George Bennett is the director of business development at Altec Technology System in uh, Toronto. Uh, he has an extensive career with uh, over 25 years working in various environment fields, waste management, wastewater treatment, air pollution control, and environmental consulting. His presentation is entitled Advanced Technologies for Order Control. Hello. I'll be presenting on the advanced technologies for odor control, for experiences we've had through Alltech. So we usually do uh, technology-based solutions for, for odors and a number of other different uh, air emissions. So pollution control equipment, we select the design and the s select the different technologies. Uh, we're the licensee for the patent system Richter Venturi Air Scrubber. It's a high-performance uh, air scrubber for particulate and gases. Uh, we can combine a different technologies, including uh, Venturi scrubbers, pack towers, cyclones, demisters, tray scrubbers, carbon, etc., based on the contaminants we're trying to, uh, to uh, reduce or collect. So we try to focus on the understanding and the exper our experience based on the processes we've evaluated in the past. So we apply design, manufacturing, installation, integration and maintenance for a full turnkey uh, system. We can also recover uh, collected contaminants from the, from the water stream. Uh, it could be reused in, in byproducts or other products. So this is our patented Venturi scrubber we're the licensee for. Typically, your packed towers are used for controlling gases and odors. But here we had quite a uh, a lot of success in controlling gases with the Venturi scrubber. So basically the uh, contaminated air is brought in here. Uh, there's fairly large spray nozzles that don't clog at this point. But going across the Venturi is a high sh shear velocity, like 100 meters a second, that atomizes the scrubbing fluid to a very fine mist to force contact with contaminants. We also have a uh, very... Oh, sorry. This is a variable Venturi throat, so it can be adjusted to maintain a pre pressure differential with different varying airflows for optimum, optimum performance. From here, that pressing the wrong buttons here. And from here, it goes to a cyclonic demister, where the uh, airs and contaminated the liquids or it hits the sides of the, the, the cyclonic demister, settles to the bottom of this reservoir. Clean air is exhausted, and the scrubbing fluid is constantly being recirculated back to the venturi. So we can, we, based on the loading of the, uh, the, the water stream, we bleed off some based on the, to maintain a certain uh, percentage solid so that it doesn't get oversaturated. Here's another graphic showing the uh, venturi throat. Here's the variable venturi. Here's the actuator here. And there's the, where the water's introduced. And this can be sized at anywhere from you know, 100 CFM to 100,000 CFM. So for odor control, we try to characterize the odors we're, uh, that are required. We identify specific chemical compounds causing the odors, uh, characterize and understand the chemistry, form, and dynamics and state of the, the odors we're trying to uh, reduce. Identify odorous compounds that can be particulate matter, aerosols, or gases. Determine if conditioning the airstream will improve the removal efficiency by cooling uh, condensable gases to find to aerosols for removal by the uh, air scrubber. Identify chemical additives that can be added to, re to react with gases and oxidize gases to a, a non-odorous state. And select the most caught most effective emission, emission control uh, equipment, which could be several stages for selected compounds. This is, so this could be a series of venturi scrubbers, nozzle scrubbers, tray scrubbers, uh, different technologies to get optimum performance uh, for removal of, of contaminants. <clears throat> so new advances in venturi scrubber design provide removal efficiencies for a broad range of fine particulates, aerosols, mists, selected gases, and VOCs in a single stage system. Venturi scrubber atomizes the scrubbing fluid to create an exponentially large surface area 
across the venturi to force contact with uh, contaminants, which also could be reacted with chemical additives. Here's some case studies for odor control that uh, we've been involved with. <coughs> Excuse me. For uh, brewing, there's a release of, uh, from brew kettles, there's a release of aldehydes and turpins, it were easily condensed to remove by the uh, wet, uh, wet scrubber. As you condense these um, condensables, they create like an aerosol or a particulate that can be removed by the uh, venturi scrubber. <coughs> For vinyl manufacturing, the release of plasticizer gases at high and light VOCs from the casting ovens can be cooled with a quench to condense the plasticizers into aerosols, which can then be scrubbed by the venturi. A spice blending, which is basically in the form of particulate matter, we can remove the uh, odorous uh, spices by the venturi scrubber. <coughs> Excuse me. For foundry uh, die casting, we're involved with a pro, uh, project where we identified ammonia, formaldehydes, and phenols as the odorous compounds. And we added chemical additives as sulfuric acid for ammonia and caustic and hydrogen peroxide for phenols and uh, formaldehyde. <coughs> uh, tobacco roasting, odorous VOCs were scrubbed with dilutes, caustic, and hydrogen peroxide in a, in a wet scrubber. Uh, coatings manufacturer. We're involved with a project where we actually use a propylene, dipropylene glycol to scrub, scrub styrene from the process. This acts as a solvent will actually remove the styrene from the airstream. And it was captured, recap, recaptured in flash drums for reuse. So we sprayed it into a, a, a tank that had no, no headspace where the styrene was released and it was condensed and, and for reuse in the process. <clears throat> In printing, release of light VOCs and fine paper dust. We can co-scrub both compounds with the Venturi wet scrubber. Uh, chicken processing, there was a release of ammonia and dander from their chicken receiving area. Uh, they were getting odor complaints. <coughs> Excuse me. Then we co-scrub scrub both compound or both contaminants with the Venturi scrubber to remove uh, PM 2.5 and ammonia. Sewage plants, we use. Um, for hydrogen sulfide and ammonia, we use caustic and peroxide to oxidize H2S to uh, sodium sulfate, non-odorous stable state. And here are some uh, case study projects we were involved with. Uh, this was to control uh, nuisance odors at a pumping station in a residential area. <coughs> so we conducted a pilot study to monitor H2S at the inlet and outlet of the uh, pilot unit over a two-day period uh, with portable H2S monitors. And the scrubbing fluid we use is 1% caustic, 0.5% peroxide, and uh, clean water. So the inlet levels were anywhere from 20 to 120 ppm of hydrogen sulfide. And the outlet, outlet levels were zero over the trial period. So we basically 99% removal of H2S using those uh, chemical additives. There was no other detectable odors were present at the outlet. Here's the actual pumping station showing the, um, this is the wet well where the H2S and odors were released. Now here's our pilot unit. We took a slipstream from the, from the wet well here. And this is the results we got for removing hydrogen sulfide. You can see the inlet levels have varied quite a bit over the time period. Basically had 99% removal over the whole time period. Now there was an odor control industrial wastewater treatment plant. <coughs> Excuse me, they were getting odor complaints from uh, residential areas. This was at a milk processing facility in uh, San Antonio, Texas. So the odors were from hydrogen sulfide, organic acids, and spoiled milk. So we conducted a pilot study to monitor H2S with portable gas monitors again. And inlet readings were up to 110 ppm. So once again, we used dilute to hydrogen peroxide and caustic, showing 99% of H2S. And no other detectable odors were detected at the outlets of the uh, pilot unit. Based on this, we installed a 30,000 CFM 
Venturi scrubber to treat the five air changes an hour from the headspace of the wastewater treatment plant. Once again, here shows the uh, inlet and outlet of H2S over the time period. It's a bit of variation. We use different uh, chemical additives. Here we use sodium hypochlorite and peroxide. Here we use uh, sodium salt or sodium hydroxide and uh, peroxide. And here we use sodium hydroxide and peroxide. We varied the pressure differential across the Venturi, which didn't really seem to make any difference in the, in the removal efficiency. And here's the actual installation at the plant. So here's the 30,000 CFM system outside the building, basically taking the air right off the headspace. Here's like the primary reactors, DAF systems. These are all the odors were generated from this area. You also had sludge dewatering, it's a number of different odorous compounds. And you also had <coughs> supply a system for odor control at an ethanol plant. It was a 30,000 CFM Venturi scrubber system rector uh, to control fine dust, SO2, and H2S, and ethanol vapors from uh, wet corn dryers. The plant received odor complaints from residential, area, from residential neighbors. We identified other fugitive sources at the plant which were vented to the scrubber to remove odorous compounds. And with improved uh, material management and treatment, the air scrubber at the plant received no longer received odor complaints. And actually put this one on top of the building outside on the roof. Here's the uh, vents from the corn dryers. There was four corn dryers in the, going into the, the Venturi scrubber. We also supplied a system to uh, a foundry. So this is aluminum die cast uh, receiving. We're receiving complaints from the surrounding uh, residents. The fumes were identified as ammonia, formaldehyde, and phenols uh, from the die cast binders. As they added the liquid molten metal, the, the binders would burn off and create these, these gases. So we conducted a pilot study using a sulfuric acid in the first stage for ammonia and caustic and peroxide in the second stage for formaldehyde and phenols. And we received, uh, achieved a 99%, or no, sorry, 90% odor re removal based on olfactory panel testing. Based on this, we installed a 30,000 CFM system. This is inside the, uh, the foundry. They're basically sitting on a platform 20 feet off the ground. And all the uh, die cast areas were enclosed and the, the vapors were sucked off into the, the Venturi scrubber. So the basic advantages is high, high removal efficiency for odors of fine particulate, uh, moisture vapors, aerosols, selected gases, and VOCs in a single stage scrubber system. A small footprint, modular design, single stage, easily to retrofit to existing systems, uh, low operating and maintenance needs, well adapted to remote locations, a low water and chemical usage, could be designed anywhere from 100 to 100,000 CFM. Uh, there's no fixed media to replace, no channeling, no breakthrough, and a wide choice of construction materials based on the corrosive nature of the collected gases. So it could be FRP, uh, stainless steel, carbon steel, thermal plastics. And basically that's my presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Any, any questions? Any uh, questions? Anyone have questions? Okay. Yes? How do we keep The noisiest component is the fan. <clears throat> and typically it's around 85 decibels or less. But it can be enclosed if it's outside the building to con with uh, insulation to control noise. Yep. No other questions? Right. 
Well, yeah, the compounds are collected in the scrubbing fluid, and it's being recirculated up to, you know, five, uh, five uh, suspended or sus TTS. But um, you have to blow off some so it doesn't get over, oversaturated. So there's a blowdown rate based on the loading, which would go to wastewater treatment. Typically, they're non non hazardous compounds like uh, sodium hydroxide, and caustic creates sodium sulfate, which is basically stable inner, you know non hazardous salt. But you have to be within certain limits when you discharge; otherwise, you have to have uh, your own wastewater treatment. Other questions? Yes. For particulates. Um, we can get up to like 99% point, point 0.5 micron based on the pressure differential across the venturi throat. So it's very, very efficient for fine particulate. And we have a software program where we can calculate the pressure differential needed based on the, the particulate size distribution. It'll, yeah, it affects the efficiency. Yes, yeah, we have a pilot unit. We can do demonstrations and take inlet outlet samples. I don't know if it was shown there. Yeah, here's the pilot unit here. So it's only basically 50 ccm. So we can take a slipstream, measure inlet and outlet concentrations of contaminants. And we can, you know, we can uh, adjust the pressure differential and everything to show different performance. For, for uh, removal of contaminants. Anyone? Yes? How does this compete economically with five Also, the Venturi scrubber is a lot smaller footprint. It's a lot low, lower cost, capital cost, substantially lower. Based on the contaminants uh, and the use of, uh, I guess, chemical additives, it probably, it's probably less also, depending on the inlet loading. <laughs> that can all, all be calculated based on inlet loading and performance. There are other questions? If there are no questions, I would thank you. Thank you. Again.